Hey, what's up, Reefers? In this video, I'll try to be really clear on how I beat Dinoflagellants once again in 2021. Guys, this is looking really promising. Look at this. Dino is almost all gone. It's definitely receding. I mean, there's definitely still some over there, but it's definitely receded since yesterday. And I think cyanobacteria has really cut back as well. I'm not sure if it's the conchs or it's the raised temperature or whatever it is. That's definitely gone. Uh, we do see a lot more of these complex green algae coming in. It's like something just clicked and the majority of the algae that's taking up the nutrient is these kind right there. It's no longer dinoflagellants or cyanobacteria. So I think the tank is uh, swinging in the direction that I really hope that it does. I'm contemplating whether I should just siphon them out to give them an extra boost, but I don't think it's even necessary. Things are just kind of disappearing. The next morning. All right, guys, I'm sure you're tired of seeing this face right here, sitting at this chair right here, doing some water testing right here. But it is what it is. We got to get the numbers down pat. So looking at the nitrate this morning, I would say this is probably a 17. And this makes sense because I've been feeding pretty heavily. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll call this a 15 or 17 actually. Let's just call it a 17. Sometimes it's kind of tough to tell. And phosphate is going to come in at 0.08. Good. We're slowly moving towards our 0 0.05 target, but 0 0.08 is totally acceptable and it is a good number. Let me just say that I'm 100% ready for auto testing uh, nutrient level as well. Right now I do have the Alcatronic to help me auto test the alkalinity. I think it's like two or three times a day and it is a game changing machine. It is so easy to dive in dosing, but what's more important is it helps me catch any swing like the day that it happened. So I was able to adjust it right away. So this has been a fantastic piece of gear. Now with nutrient testing, Matt <laughs> Mastertronic from Focustronic is coming out and I will be getting my hands on it. So hopefully you won't see me sitting in front of this desk, in front of this tank, doing these water tests as much as uh, this past two months has been daily. I don't know what she's talking about. Three days later. Reefers, this is it. I've been waiting two months to do this. Right here, 145 gallon tank. We used to have dinoflagellant issues, but now it's no more. So for the very first time, we're gonna scrape the glass. First of all, I need to give thanks to all these algae right here. These algaes are the ones that help me beat the dinoflagellants. I competed the dino for nutrients and then uh, it just kind of exploded, dino receded. As you can see, we only have a tiny, tiny little batch right there, tiny, tiny little batch in the back on the same bed. But for the most part, it is under control. Well, look at this. Hey, there's starfish. Patrick? Yeah. Goodbye, Patrick. Don't! <laughs> what? Oh man, this try. feels so I'm nice. I'm gonna try. Oh my goodness, I I'm haven't sprayed glasses in so long. Okay, all right. Wait. <laughs> nice. Yes. 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 All the way to the edge. Yep. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. Whoa. All right, easy, Tiger. Easy. Easy. All right, all right, all right, all right. careful. <laughs> Careful, careful. You don't want to kick things up and then get caught in the scraper and then scratch your glass. Hi, the snail I got the wall. Oh, more more tarugo. Tarugo over there, man. It's okay. It will hurt. Kill him then. Yeah, just uh, just, yeah, just leave him. Yeah. Just leave him alone. Emily's having too much fun. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. yeah. I just don't want to do my work. Okay, what work? Has to do. Oh. Ooh. We did it, guys. I did not stir the sand bed or anything this week and look at this nice clean white sand bed. We still have a tiny tiny bit of dusting of dinoflagellant like right there and right there but that's it. That's it. No more dino in this tank. And after scraping the glass of the diatom, um, they did not come back. I think this tank has finally reached a balance where the dino does not grow. Um, I think there may be some microalgae just growing on the rock and on the glass and the fish and the cleanup crew like snails and conchs are just making short work of them really, really quickly. And of course the refugium really spun up as well. I'll show you guys uh, when the light is on at some point. Cadles and the red microalgae high yeast are just growing out of control, taking over all the excess nutrient versus letting the dino to have a chance to use them. So this is excellent, excellent. We did it guys. I think we finally beat dinoflagellants after about two months. Which honestly is not bad because I was buckling down. I was getting ready to fight this for like half a year or so uh, if needed. Uh, I was not gonna give up because I know that this is beatable. We've beat it twice or three times already. You make this the third or fourth times. I've lost track. Just a matter of recovery now. Uh, for the corals. Keeping the parameters in check and not making too many changes 
and uh, just letting things settle down. One really interesting thing is that in the last video, I made fun, well, I didn't make fun of the gobies, but I mentioned that three of the gobies are living in the same barrel. I guess uh, the one heard that and he decided to move in as well. So <laughs> you can see actually four high fins goby are living under the same rock. They are sharing the same barrel, which is super awesome. Look at this, one, two, three. For the fourth one is a little bit shy, so it's kind of tucked in in the back, but we got awful little goobies right here. How cool is that? One week later. Hey, what's up, Reefers? In this video, I'll try to be really clear on how I beat Dino Flagellants once again in 2021. I've documented how I beat Dino in the 45 gallon tank a couple years back, and one of the criticisms I got is that it's not really clear what I did. It seems like I just kind of beat it by luck. And at that time, honestly, I pretty much threw the whole kitchen sink to it. But this time around, I wanted to try something new in terms of beating dinos, so I did not use hydrogen peroxide. I'll share exactly what I did, but before we dive in, it's really important to know how dino came about. Typically in a reef tank, dino comes in when your nutrient, which means nitrate and phosphate bottoms out, whether it's zero or really, really near zero. The reason for that is because a lot of algae cannot grow in that environment, but dino is able to thrive in that environment. So even when the nitrate and phosphate is super low, they just comes in, take on any nutrient they can grab and just kind of bloom. And that's why you have dino bloom when your nitrate and phosphate bottoms out. And that's exactly what happened to this tank right here. Two months ago, for about two weeks, I got really, really sick and I hardly fed the tank. As a result, my nitrate completely bottomed out. And the next thing I know, boom. Dino blooms. So one really important thing to know is what kind of dino you have because depending on what you have, the treatment may be slightly different. The ones I got is called Infidilium and they ascend drillers, meaning that when the light goes off, they go into the sand instead of going to the water column. And if you want to learn how to ID different kind of dino, I have a link below to a really, really nice PDF. The best way to see what kind of dino you have is just get some samples out, look under a microscope. The microscope can be something really cheap. For example, initially I used like a $15 uh, microscope to ID what kind of dino I have. If you're interested, I'll have a link down below. Now, regardless of what type of dino you have, number one step is always to raise your nutrient because it doesn't matter what you do, you kill off the dino. If the environment is still perfect for dino, it's gonna come back. So, first thing first, raise your nitrate, raise your phosphate. The numbers up for debate, but this time around, I talked to some of the folks, especially Daniel from New York. He has been tremendous in helping me be dino this round. The number he dropped was nitrate of between 10 to 20 BPM and phosphate of 0.05 to 0.5. 1 ppm. But again, these are just reference number and if you're trying to beat dinoflagellin a little bit more elevated, should be okay. Quick notes I got from Daniel. Uh, nitrate for the most part is okay with corals. If you push it a little bit higher and faster, it should be okay. It's only up to a certain high point where the fish gill is going to fill it. It's going to hurt the fish. But phosphate is the one that you do not want to raise or lower too quickly. If I remember correctly, any change more than a 0.05 in phosphate, it's going to be pretty detrimental towards corals. It's going to stress them out. So that's just a little bit that I pick up from Daniel that I thought I would love to share. All right, now that you have the nitrate and phosphate up, the next step is really determined by what kind of dinoflagellin that you have. Uh. So a really common type of dino is called osteoposis. Osteo, osteosis, osteosis, osteosis. I suck at pronouncing this one because I don't have this type, so I don't need to pronounce it. Osteosis, osteosis. The more common and the more toxic type is called osteosis. If you look under the microscope, they tend to spin around one pivot point, and they seem to have a sharp beak when you look under the microscope as well. Unfortunately, this type is more toxic, meaning that if you have snails and stuff like that that eats them, usually the inverse is gonna die. But the silver lining is that this type is also easier to beat. The reason? Because they go airborne. <laughs> The reason they're easier to beat is because they go into the water column when the light is out. Remember I said I got the amphidemian types that go into the sand, this type go into the water column. So while I do not have direct experience with this based on everything that I'm reading, everybody that's tell me to get a UV filter, that seems to be key for fighting this kind of dinoflagellants. People claiming that with a properly sized UV filter, within a week or two, you can probably just destroy this type of dinoflagellum really quickly. But again, these are the information I get from people that message me or I read online, so I do not have personal experience with it. So your mileage may vary, but in theoretically and based on what I'm reading, that seems to be the case for this type of dinoflagellants. If you are unfortunate like me, who got the amphidilium type, I got the large cell version that goes into the sand and that does not go into the water column at night, meaning that UV filter will not be effective. In the past, hydrogen peroxide did work, but this time around I wanted to try a new method 
silica dosing. There is a huge thread on reef to reef talking about fighting amphidelium dinoflagellates and it seems like silica dosing is the next cool thing to do. So the whole idea of trying to beat amphidelium is to use competitors, not so much destroying amphidelium, unless you want to pull the whole sand bed and yeah you beat it but also your tank would not have any sand which some people are cool with it. Some people are saying pull the sand, clean it, wait like a month or two and then put the sand back works for them, but that's not something I want to go with. So I need to introduce competitors. And the reason people say to those silica, which I have here, Sponge Excel from Brightwell, if you need something in higher volume, you can get something called the water glass. Uh, basically it's silica as well. It's not aquarium related product, but it's the exact same thing. But because I don't need that much, I just got Sponge Excel. Apparently Sponge loves these stuff. But the whole idea of dosing silica is to induce a diatom bloom. And diatom is those dirty algae that you don't want. The fuzz on the rock, the fuzz on the glass, is just nasty. But in this case, those are our allies. The whole concept is that once your nitrate and phosphate is up, right now Dino still has a monopoly on it. You want to introduce a new player and to give them a little boost. And dosing silica will help induce a diatom bloom. So they come in full force and hopefully they'll overgrow the dinoflagellates. And during this period of time, you do not clean your tank, you do not scrape your glass. When you see things growing on your glass, you're on the right track. And that's why you see in the previous videos, my glass is always really dirty because I don't want to touch them. I want those algae to establish in the tank and take over dino. So while dosing silica, I was also talking to other experienced reefer who have beat dinos a couple times and they're telling me that, okay, well, besides silica, you can also try other things to bring in different kind of competitors to put pressure on dino from different directions. I'm like, all right, well, I'm down with that. So if you look online, you also see people suggest dosing bacteria as well as live phytoplankton. And that's exactly what I did. In my particular case, I dosed Mycobacter 7, which is tried and true. And for phytoplankton, I dosed Reef Nutrition's Phytofeast Life. And just FYI, the other products recommended on the market are the Fritz Turbo Start 9000. And for Phytos, it will be the LG Barnes Ocean Magic. In fact, on the page, it claimed that the Ocean Magic actually beats Dino specifically. So at this point, I kept the nitrate up. I kept the phosphate up. I was dosing bacteria. I was dosing phytoplankton. I was dosing silicas. And things are slowly moving in the right direction. I started seeing different kind of algae coming in. Excellent. All right, so things are trucking along. And at this point I was like, all right, you know what? Can we speed it along a little bit? So I actually did a five day blackout. So I did a five day blackout on the tank, knowing that it is not gonna be this type of dinoflagellant, but I think it should weaken it to give all the other algae a chance to come in and take the real estate. So the blackout did work in terms of beating the dino back a little bit. They did come back two days later, but it is not as vicious. It's a lot lighter. However, the blackout also killed off some of the nice diatom that I want to keep. And also the problem is that I actually pulled the skimmer cup, so I was not skimming. And without me knowing, the nitrate and phosphate actually crap up to a really high level. During the blackout, I think I was only feeding one time a day, so it's really a little bit of food. So I don't think the excess food, even if the fish is not eating them, which I don't think they were, uh, was the problem to the nitrate and the phosphate. What I think it could be is actually the dinoflagellates or other algae dying and releasing the nutrient back into the water. In hindsight, I probably would have skipped the blackout or maybe just do a three day blackout. So it's a little bit more gentle and not as many die offs because I noticed most of the die offs comes after the third day. Because I did a water test on the second day, since everything is normal, I just assumed things would be normal, no change, so I did not do water test since. That came back and bit me in the butt. But again, given my experience, if I were to fight Amphidelium Dinoflagella again, I probably would just skip the blackout and just go with the slow and steady route of uh, having something outcompete them. So for the final nail in the coffin for Dinoflagella in my tank, here's an interesting one. A few of you guys sent me links to a Reef Builders article about turning up the temperature to fight Dinoflagella. And right now we have Dino on the run. It is slowly receding day by day. And I figure, all right, well, if uh, turning up the temperature can really beat it, why not? I've done the blackout already, may as well try this. So I turned the tank temperature to 83 degrees and I did this for about five days. Now to be fair, with all the things that's going on, dinoflagellate was already on the way out, but I think turning up the heat really gave it a little shove out the door. And I have that link to that Reef Builders article down in the video description below as well. So with everything I learned in this go around, if I were to battle Amphidelium Dinoflagella again, this is exactly what I'll do. First, I'll raise my nitrate to between 10 to 20 ppm. Second, 
I'll raise my phosphate to between 0.05 to 0.09 ppm. I'm gonna turn the heat up to 83 degrees just to see if there's any change because this is such an easy thing to do. It's a low hanging fruit, but of course, keep an eye on your fish and on your corals to make sure they're not stressed out. If that does not work, I'll add bacteria and I'll add live phytoplankton to see if that'll be dinoflagellin. If those do not work, then I'll dose silica and I'll really dose silica to induce that diatom bloom. Oof, I talk so much that my battery died. I hope this video has been clear and has been helpful. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment below. Uh, if I cannot answer it, I'm sure somebody will. And I'll link all the links I mentioned in this video in the video description below as well. I understand sometimes it's frustrating because sometimes like one person mentioned this solution worked for them, but the other swears that it does not work. And now that you know there's different types of dinoflagellant, namely the type that go into the water column that can be picked off by UV, and the other type that go into the sand that UV pretty much has no effect on, it you know why there's so much conflicting information out there so hopefully this video has been helpful but once again if you have any questions leave it in the comments below and i wish you the best of luck if you are fighting dinoflagellates it is something that can be beatable it took me two months kind of sucks but again i'm happy that i beat it again and if somebody like me who is such an average reefer can beat it so many times so can you my friend you got this dinoflagellates no problem